Hello, um, today it's going to be a little bit of a different session. Um, just a few small things uh, that I've noticed is um, when I'm trying to run in, in, in real time and um, communicate with uh, the LLMs and, and think at the same time, I tend to speak a little bit slow. I usually do not speak slow, but in this situation, um, it sounds a little too slow when I'm listening to the videos. So my suggestion is just try to watch it on 2x. Um, today I'm experimenting with something different. I put my face on it. Um, you know, hopefully this is not going to bother you too much. Um, today I'm not going to start directly with the new things that we're going to do, but I just want to talk a little bit about um, what exactly the plan is. I didn't want to start with that uh, just because I don't want to like make empty promises, uh, make video part one, and then I don't do anything after that. Uh, so I just wanted to push a little bit and see where we can go with it uh, initially in the first few parts. And then after that, I can give you my idea what I want to, to, to build. Uh, you already know it's a, supposedly a real world project and it's supposedly related somehow to Elon Musk and its interviews, his interviews. Um, <laughs> the idea is that um, if you want to make something by yourself, there's very little uh, empty niches for, niches for that. Like pretty much everything that it can be uh, filled up, it's already filled up. And it's really not so simple as, for example, Apple is trying to present it on their WWDC um, conferences where they show like some, you know, kids and ladies and people in villages in Africa that they learn how to code uh, on uh, iPad on the playground uh, for Swift and they're building the next killer app. That's not happening. Like people like that could have built stuff by themselves in 20. 10, for example, when people were actually making money, making um, flash light applications. Uh, but pretty much all these niches were occupied now by big players or uh, Apple directly uh, create their own um, functionality directly in iOS. So you cannot really make money. I, I, like the purest example, there was like a hundred thousand um, flashlight apps back in the day now this is just part of the phone um like making games and things like that seems like a low-hanging fruit for people who haven't even tried to do that but this besides behind these things even the simplest one a huge studios are sitting and their goal all the time is to find the next big thing and and they have a a, a lot of professionals so the whole point of, of what I'm doing now is um, to see, I mean, if you don't want to start a real big business and, and, and find partners, work with other people, invest money or, or borrow money to, to invest in the business. And if you really want to try the indie way, you know, the independent developer way um, is the LLMs are at the level where they can help you with that. And this was the, the, the very, not the first, but the second thought I had after I tried ChatGPT a couple of years ago. Um, the first one was like, wow, that really looks like a, a thinking machine. How did they build that? But then I tested it for coding and it, said, and it was pretty damn smart back in the day. This was like, the first versions of GPT-4. Ever since then, I, I'm using the paid versions. And recently I stopped it because clearly uh, Anthropic uh, Cloth Sunet 3.5 is outperforming them. Um, but ever since then, I'm thinking, is this going to replace any developer? And the answer back then was no, and to my, in my opinion, the even at the moment is no. But um, I, I really wanted to see if it can be like your wingman, someone that can help you uh, build stuff, and what level of knowledge you need uh, to 
to be able to utilize it fully. Uh, apparently, the noobs are out of the chat. <laughs> you cannot uh, do it if you don't know what you're doing at all. I mean, you can, but you have to ask a lot of stupid questions and really want to learn. So without gaining, like just copy pasting at some point, this thing is going to stop knowing what it's doing and it's going to go in circles. I've been there many times. Uh, so you have to pay attention. You have to try to understand what you're doing and just ask it to help you here and there to move forward. So that's my current under, um, stance. This is what I think it's possible. Uh, but I've never implemented on something larger than st uh, small scripts for, for different things that I need. Um, so I want to try on something bigger. And we're going back to the ideas that everything is already um, filled up. So if you go for after big applications like you know uber you cannot create uber because you, you need a lot of infrastructure behind it a lot of people are using it you cannot create like a um, snapchat or something like this because they, for, for the normal user this is an app but behind it there's a lot of hardware and software infrastructure so you have to go for something smaller um, and smaller things are already occupied then what else you can develop so you can have a motivation to keep working on it um, that makes sense. And in my opinion, I cannot really think of an idea that's commercially viable. So I chose the next uh, logical thing to create something that I like. And as you can tell by the theme about my um, <laughs> application so far, I'm a huge fan of, of Elon Musk. And I've been browsing X daily and seeing mixed um, opinions about him. Uh, lately a lot of negative ones I would not comment whether or not this is uh, warranted but a lot of people are just like hating on him um, and it's it looks like they're completely uh, unaware of what he he uh, what he did and and who he is and, and what he's capable of and they just like heard something that the media is told, telling them to, that they have to think about uh, and repeat and, and they do it on X or maybe they're just trolls and bots or maybe they just really believe this stuff and one of the things that I um, really hate when I see is when people are really um, trying to point him as a, as a liar or, or a non-engineer or uh, like someone who uh, achieved everything on the shoulders of everyone else. I've been following him for over 12 years. Um, and I would say that I've watched pretty much every single interview that he did in the past uh, 15 years or more. So, uh, and also following his business and uh, ventures and achievements. And you can have any opinion of him, but you cannot take away many of the things that he set as a goal to achieve and, and he achieved. Um, th things that were completely thought not possible, like, landing rockets in the middle of the ocean or launching an EV revolution in 2010s when people were driving huge SUVs and was completely, uh, everyone was completely thinking he's crazy um, or one that people are not really uh, giving enough credit yet, but in the future it's going to be huge. It's a Starlink, like uh, having a viable satellite constellation for delivering cheap and fast uh, reliable internet to any point on the planet uh, was a dream. It was not possible. And uh, <laughs> he started with just a couple of satellites like five years ago. People were thinking he's completely crazy. Right now they're operating over 6,000, six, six and a half thousand uh, satellites, which is at the moment constitutes like two thirds of all live satellites, active satellites in, in low Earth orbit or any Earth orbit. So <laughs> you cannot take away this from him. Of course, he made many promises and people are usually using them to attack him like he probably promising for the last eight years that the full set of driving is going to be uh, achieved by the end of the current year and it's not happening. Um, and to a certain extent, they were right. But it, 
I certainly believe that they're getting closer than, than ever. Uh, but until it's official and it's, uh, uh, you see these cars driving by themselves on the streets, let's say it's not real. One other thing was the Cybertruck. Many people were saying this can never pass the crash test. This can never be approved to drive on the streets. But they are making them in the thousands and selling them. People like them and drive them. So, or like creating the world's most uh, uh, sold car by far from any other car. Um, all these things are just incredible. Of course, he has a lot more audacious promises that he made, like sending people to Mars, sending uh, missions to, to Mars on uh, the Dragon capsule, which was supposed to happen in 2018. He couldn't achieve those. Uh, he had a lot of uh, ambitious goals about the uh, SpaceX uh, Starship, uh, which is still quite behind the original schedule. Uh, but you still cannot take away that this is the largest rocket that ever flew uh, and the most powerful one. And, and, and they're just creating, as we speak, uh, um, assembly line, a huge factory that is pumping these ships every couple of weeks and really aspiration to do this every few days so he is doing what he's saying um so <laughs> with all this long rant i just wanted to explain wh why i'm doing what i'm doing uh, again this is completely a hobby uh, that's why i'm putting it on youtube and on on github uh I, if i had a next killer app idea i wouldn't have uh, shared with everyone because I am losing the advantage. You know, usually when you have an idea, you have to act quick and uh, implement it. This is open for everyone. If you want to use it, use it. If you want to replicate it, replicate it. I don't care. I'm going to be creating some sort of a, um, a website or application, some sort of a client uh, where, first of all, I'm going to be creating a database of all his interviews throughout the years. Um, and someone might ask like why would you do that you can just google for those things yes you can google but uh, you can youtube search for those things but you need to know what you're looking for and also you need to know when this happened and this video has been re-uploaded multiple times uh, throughout the years some of them are just pieces cut out of other interviews so i would like to have like a timeline of everything that uh he uh, said throughout the years and see all the all the promises that he made so um, I wanted to basically have a timeline of the interviews uh, with a clear uh, idea I mean with the information uh, when the interview happened with whom this interview happened and then I would probably try to find a, a transcripts of each of them so they're easier to to find i mean they're easier to to search um and also i would like to create like a separate part of the database where i'm going to keep all the predictions that he made um and in when they were made and in which video so we're going to have probably references to uh, those predictions and some sort of a search option to search for for those predictions um so if someone says he's full of crap uh, you can go on the website and say check um, when did he promise that um tesla is going to make half a million cars um and he made this promise in 2013 at that time or 2014 something like that at that time tesla was barely making 50,000 and this was like six years away um, and there's a interview a famous one on I think CNBC where he says that they're going to make half a million cars uh, by 2020 and everyone was laughing like there's these bears that were saying this never happened in the history of the world like a, a large uh manufacturing company to grow i think compounded it was like 60 percent per year for six consecutive years people were thought like he's completely out of it and um 
it turns out that in 2020 they made like 499,990 cards or something like this. They they were short like 10, 15 cards. It was insane. Like so, so it, it, you can actually ha create like some sort of a a, a scorecard for him and, and and see what percentage of his uh, things are happening when he says they're going to happen. What percentage of them are happening late? Uh, because certainly there there are many of those. Like he promised several times that the crew capsule uh, is going to fly in 2016, 17, 18. But another day flew in 2020. But still, to this day, it's the only capsule that is actually licensed to fly uh, humans in space. So certain things are happening uh, later. Uh, some things he gives up on, like he wanted to make a, a candy company to compete with Warren Buffett. So far, we don't have a candy company. So I'm going to have in this database a list of promises and uh, when they were made and a links to different times when he said them so we can have a firm date when, when they were done. And the goal is to, to see overall... Um, is he really a genius and you should never bet against Dillon or he's like hit or miss or he's full of crap, which I <laughs> I tell you from now, it's not the case because he achieved things that are thought to be impossible. Um, yeah, the, yeah, this is a hobby of mine. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be informed on the things that are happening because they're interesting to me, space, space travel and electric cars and things like that. These are um, fascinating things for me. He also has his um, fingers on many other businesses, including AI. I am paying for Grok, uh, and honestly, I'm very impressed from Grok. Uh, it's my go-to source for news. Um, when he says that, that the X is where the news is happening, he's right to a certain extent. But if you combine X with Grok, then, then he's completely right. Like... If you want to check what's the latest of, say, I don't know, certain crisis that is going on around the world, you just type to Grok and it automatically searches all the relevant tweets or X's, X posts uh, in real time and gives you the news. No advertisements, no um, editorial uh, biases, uh, quotes different sources, gives you um, the links to the tweets. Uh, of course, Anyone can write stuff, but overall, when everyone can write, you're going to get uh, something in between. It's not going to be left-leaning or right-leaning or anything like that. So you can get the news there. No need to go to different websites for different types of things. You just write what's the latest with Tesla today and gives you the information uh, from the latest um, posts that people are, are putting. So I I do like X and um, I, I use Grok. I also use it for image generation because it's completely uncensored in, in the sense of not the not safe for work type of uncensored, but it doesn't really care about copyright. So you can generate images of people uh, where and it's not being politically informed like some other LLMs which are struggling to create a picture of George Washington. So yeah, I would like to do that. Uh, whether or not I'm gonna make it, uh, the time will show. show. Um, so a few words about what are the next steps. Um, so I wrote a couple of things here in my file. So the next steps is to expand the database. At the moment, I have interviews, I have predictions. I have to think about whether or not I want to put more fields for now because you can add a bunch of fields. Um, most likely, I should. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to have a separate table for the interviewers. Uh, I would need that if, for example, I'd like to keep different information about the interviewer. But if it's only the name, I can just keep it as a, a column inside of the interview. 
but for now I have two separate tables. One is for video uh, for interviews, the other one is for predictions. And there will be an intermediate table that links the videos to the inter um, to the um, predictions. I'm not going to bother you with details. I don't know who's watching, if anyone is watching at all. But if you're interested, you can have a look at the code. Or if you have questions, I can make more. I just comment and, and I'll try to explain the things. Um, but the, the basic idea is we have to expand um, the database. This is where I'm going to store my information. How I'm going to obtain the information is another topic that I didn't include here. And I probably should have. Uh, for now, it's going to be by hand. I'm just going to go to the YouTube and find a few interviews and enter them just for testing purposes. Uh, but then afterwards, I have to see for some kind of automation. Uh, if it's not worth it to do automation, I'll just do it by hand because I don't know if he has more than 200 interviews in the last 15 years. Maybe, maybe, maybe he has. Um, so once I enter everything, then I'm going to create this so-called API that we're talking about. I mean, I'm already working on it. Um, just a couple of words for what API is. Uh, I think it stands for Application Programming Interface. Um, and this particular one is called RESTful API. Um, pretty much everything that you have on your phone that gets data from the internet comes from some sort of API like that. Essentially, you can think of the API as the waiter in the restaurant. Uh, it's the person or the entity that uh, takes the order from the client, brings it to the chef, chef cooks something and brings it back to you. Um, in our case, the chef is my database where I'm filling up all the data. The client could be a web page or it could be a phone app or anything else. You can make your smart TV or smart fridge to access APIs from the internet or Alexa for that matter. So most commonly the people are using apps and the client is an app so the app comes when you start the app and asks please show me the latest interviews of elon musk um so the way it does that is making a call to this api endpoints uh, endpoints are just different addresses like you want to get the users you go to the address of the api slash users you want to get the interviews you go to um the API address slash uh, interviews. And there's a couple of other uh, ways to be more precise what you want. So you can on you on interviews, you can get the interview with ID five or all interviews or the last five interviews. So you can add some parameters, but essentially you're, you're calling the waiter in the restaurant called API. Please bring me this information. And the API goes back to the uh, chef, which is the database and uh, makes some internal queries, gets the data, packages it in a form format called JSON. It's a string format in which um, the information is transferred um, as text. Uh, and then the endpoint takes it from the ch chef and brings it to the client. How the client handles that, uh, that's another topic. Um, but if you run it on the browser you're going to just simply see a json formatted information uh, about what you wanted so the step after the database would be to bring to make several endpoints which could be give me the inter all last five interviews or all interviews or interviews from from joe rogan you know filter them by by uh, interviewer or by date so we can create several uh, addresses basically we can create a menu for the client and usually the apis have documentation this documentation you can think of it as it's usually uh, the documentation is made for the developer uh, uh it's a web page where you read and see on each endpoint you get what so if you order say cheeseburger you're going to get cheeseburger with this that and the other and you have to specify do you want cucumbers or do you want pickles and, and stuff like that so uh, the API documentation is made for the developers. Um, if you want to make have a public API that people can use, if it's just private, you don't need to document it. You can just see what you wrote and uh, take the information. Um, we're not going to do a documentation unless um, 
unless um, um, Claude is uh, capable of writing it by itself quickly. Then we can just do it. Uh, just slap a few web pages and, and have documentation for it. But yeah, we're going to have the um, endpoints and their documentation. So this is the menu and the client comes there, orders whatever he wants and it goes back to, to him after the API does that. So this is what we're building at the moment, the API. Basically, some people call it the backend. This is the backend that does the business. Uh, and usually what you see on your phone is the front end or the application or application on uh, on, the, on the web browser. Um, then the next part that I want after I extend that um, locally is to deploy this one to uh, the internet. I do have one small server that I'm keeping for the last 15 years um, online so I can deploy it there. I bought a domain for this because a domain is like address you can say let's say uh, www.elonmuskelongmusk.com will be a domain i did not buy this one because most likely it's bought from him by him and even if it wasn't someone else bought it and even if i buy it at any point he can just come and take it away from me because he is rich and powerful and probably he has a trademark on his name so i bought a different domain i'm not gonna share it now but deploying on the internet means to take my application with the containers and just run it on my server but set it up so it's opened when you when you type the domain that i bought it goes directly to there of course i'm gonna have to build at least a simple uh user uh, facing page where I'm listing the interviews otherwise it's going to be completely uninteresting the more interesting part of it being online is that from that point on everyone can build on top of this API everyone can take this information um, of course if I allow him because I we implemented the token system that if you don't have a token you cannot really query the, the API basically again if we use the restaurant um, um the restaurant anal analogy uh, this would be i don't know the membership card um if you have this token and you show it when you want to buy something then the waiter is bringing you what you want if you don't have the token um this is gonna just say no we cannot serve you today um so I, we already implemented that mm, but apparently someone wants to, to use the information I'll give them I mean I, I as I said this is not for profit or anything I don't expect anyone to really care about it I I, I don't have um, I don't have expectations high expectations for that this is just a personal project as I said I want to see if I can build something that works and deploy it um, and once I deploy it on the internet, then the next step, logical step, would be to build some sort of a client. Whether this is going to be some sort of a web-based client, like a website, where people can just filter, um, watch these interviews, click on different predictions, and quickly go to the places where he, uh, on the interview where he made the the comments maybe they can vote for certain things i don't know uh, some user facing client should be the next step um so yeah i guess that's kind of a long term goal i'm i'm going to try to be persistent on this and 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 not just give up easily because it's really so far it's working the, the, as i said the goal is to see where is the limit of um of uh, i keep forgetting the name claude uh 3.5 sonnet is the latest and greatest model from entropic so i sh i'm sure it can help me in any regard that i want the question is at what point is going to be me writing everything and at what point it's going to be um 
it's going to be a collaboration. And so far it's been collaboration. A couple of times it got stuck and I was doing stupid stuff. So I had to sit down and, and read by myself and unstuck it. Um, again, the thing that is really annoying to me is that it's always apologizing and it's saying that I'm right, even in the cases when I'm not completely right. But it's great on other things because it's like you you don't have to apologize you don't have to be polite even though i'm trying to be because it's just like how we've been conditioned to uh, but it's never gonna refuse to answer a question unless the question is sensitive and and it's been trained not to answer these kind of questions but as long as you're asking the right questions then it's going to give you answers um there's something called prompt engineering so basically prompting the writing the, the the message to ask the question the LLM is supposedly a science I don't know I mean there's formats that you have to use and phrases and way to ask the question to push the model to answer in a certain way so far I don't use um, crazy difficult techniques as you can notice I'm writing with a lot of spelling errors a lot of words completely blurred or wrong or no punctuation whatsoever and in most of the cases it understands what I want of course I'm using the keywords um, in order to, to trigger the result that I want the keywords that are related to, to, to the results that I want to achieve because I know you know that this is a API and I wanted that I want to build an endpoint or I know that I want to build service so I assume if I just come from I mean nothing against baristas but if I come from Starbucks and I never did any programming I probably would not be able to um, express myself in order uh, in order to to achieve these things right away but again the barrier is not too high like as long as you can be a coherent and, and make a sentence you can start from far away and ask it to explain the terminology to you and once you start getting the terminology then you can start asking more and more in-depth questions this is amazing tool for learning I, I really envy today's kids who are in progressive enough schools where they allow them to use those things because um, it's simply amazing learning tool I, I don't know when and if ever we're going to be completely replaced by AI, but definitely this is going to step up the game. It's going to make people literally superhumans. Um, there are many, not many, but I've heard a lot of prominent people in the Silicon Valley now talking about uh, that the times when um, the times are not far off when we're going to have a billion dollar company ran by one person with the help of AI. I personally don't see that happening that soon, but I, who, I, who, who am I? I? I have no behind the curtain knowledge about what's coming. Uh, and those people do because they, they, they work and they know the investments and have seen the latest models. Um, but certainly with the levels that we have, you're not going to have a billion dollar company, uh, but you can uh, clearly utilize the, the um, advantages that the superpowers that it gives you uh, to at least beat your colleagues who are not using it in your job and again I, I bet most of you are already doing it is it, at least the free versions that are coming everywhere they're popping up every application you you start like Gmail all the Windows apps and office they, they always have a prompt that goes to either chat GPT or some other uh, frontier model if you don't use it, I strongly encourage you to not get left behind and do it. But um, yeah, my, 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 my main goal is to to see to, to push the limit to the limit what it can do and take you through this journey uh, with me. I mean, I, I know mainly my friends are checking out the videos. I see that the actual viewer uh, viewing time is not long so probably my other sessions were boring but again i don't have time to make them entertaining if you want to learn something just watch it at 2x 
skip certain parts um and and that's it just i can I, i'm not an entertainer and i'm not going to make uh, up to 10 minutes with three commercial pauses inside to make most of it that's just not my thing i i'm just naturally curious person and i would like to to learn more and and, and push the limits of what's possible so th- i'm doing this one mainly for myself but uh, whoever wants to to come on the journey is welcomed so today's video is not going to be normally named i'm going to probably to put a name like why i'm doing this or something like this but again i'm not going to go for any technical uh, stuff i'm going to think a little bit more about how to proceed with the implementation of the first part of what i said um and try to be a little bit more uh, concise and work a bit faster and uh, more concentrated so i create shorter videos because apparently 15 minute videos is no one wants to watch um yeah and one other thing that i'm, I'm promising i'm not going to promise to make short videos because every time i said that they turn out to be one hour or more so the videos are going to be long as 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 long as i want to uh, but I, i'm just try. I'll, I'll try to minimize the times when i'm not doing anything useful or i'm going in circles that also depends on uh, Claude. If Claude is smart and, and good boy, we're probably going to have less um, goings in, in cir- uh, less situations where we're going in circle. So, again, thank you. If anyone watched this, um, I will see you in the next part, which will be part seven, hopefully uh, in the next couple of days. So thank you very much and subscribe.